Ultimate is a flight computer project I've been working on for about six months. The earliest version was just a shield for an Arduino Uno and could only data log. But now, after three versions, it is now capable of data logging, firing pyrotechnics, sending telemetry back to the ground in flight, and emergency data logging. Today we are going to look at take a look at all three versions of the Ultimate Flight Computer. First of all, we're going to take a look at the earliest version of Ultimate. Well, what's left of it? We might call this version V.01. This is just a shield for an Arduino Uno. All it was capable of doing was logging accelerometer data and turning a servo motor. Next, we are going to take a look at V1. Now it says V4, but that is saying that it is the fourth design of V1. Yeah, I know, the numbering seems a little odd for V1. For the microprocessor, it is designed to use two Arduino Nano Everys, but you can really use any of the Arduino Nanos on it, and you can even only use one. <clears throat> for outputs, it has seven servo outputs and two pyro outputs, but you have to hook up a relay for that to work. For sensors, it uses a BMP3090 for the barometer, two MPU6050s for the accelerometers, and a SD card module for the data logging. The main problem with V1 is that it has way more server outputs in it than you really need. <clears throat> they are not connected to the same Arduino 2. Only one servo is connected to Arduino 1 and the rest are attached to the other. The pyro channels are also not connected to the Arduino 1. They are instead attached to Arduino 2. The other thing is that Arduino 2 does not have access to the barometer and uses a separate gyroscope. All in all, V1 honestly was not that good. Next we are going to move on to the train wreck that is V2. Now V2 got a ton more stuff. On the high hardware side it has a BMP3090 for the barometer, an ADXL375 for the accelerometer, a flash chip, a built-in SD card module for data logging, three TIP-122s, five capacitors, a level shifting chip, which was actually the reason why V2 didn't work, an AMS 5.5 uh, 5 volt and 3.3 volt power regulators, eight resistors, a SD card socket, a nrf 24 l one radio module, and a Arduino Nano 33BLE. I know, it's a lot. V2 has 33 screw terminal outputs. So now we're gonna take a look at that. Over here we have a reset pin, a RX pin, a TX pin, both go to the Arduino, a chip select pin for SPI communication, pyro channel one, uh, the ground pin for that, and pyro channel two and Pyro Channel 3 over here. Next we have some analog pins for analog reading from a chip you might hook up or something else. Over here we have a safety thing. The pyro, all these Pyro Channels will not fire unless you bridge this gap with a screw terminal wire. If this um, gap is not bridged it will not provide power to the volt plus pins. Moving over to the other side of the board, over here we have the power and switch outputs. Now a cool feature on all on um, version 2 and version 3 
is that you can hook up your battery to the plus and minus pin and on this side bridge this gap and it will consistently provide power to your Arduino but unbridge that gap and it will enable the switch pin now hook up a switch to that and you'll be able to switch on and off the flight computer over here we have power out in different voltages we have 5 volt ground and V out, which is the plus pin for whatever power regulator you have. Over here we have the rest of the SPI pins. We have MISO, MOSI, you know how that goes. And also CSN to hook up an external radio if you want. Then over here we got even more power. We got 3.3 volt too. Then we also have I2C, SCL, and SDA. Now why did Ultimate V2 not work you ask? Well, it has to do with the two chips that are here and here. Right here was the backup flash chip for emergency data logging just in case your SD card module pops SD card pops out. What happened was SCL and SDA, the two pins of I2C communication are backwards attached. And over here on the Arduino, somewhere around here, I believe, for the I2C pins, those two were backwards as well. Then, why did the SD card module not work? Because that's not related to SBI. Well, this level shifting chip, which uh, the schematic is based off of the little cheap generic modules you can get, probably not a good idea to make your SD card module work off of cheap generic chips. I wonder why. This level shifting chip creates more problems than it solves. So back here on this board, we have some resistors that then go to unscrew this the SD card socket. Now what I should have done is hooked up the SD card socket directly to the Arduino. But that's not how I did things. So that is the main reason why V2 did not work. Next, we're going to take a look at version 3, the final version. I'm not going to go over the hardware again because it has everything minus the SD card circuit. To solve the SD card module problem, I just took the same system I had before but replaced it with a module to see if that solved the problem. It didn't. After a bit of troubleshooting and help from some people from the Arduino form, I came up with a solution. I just had to hook up this S our Adafruit SD card module, module externally. Now taking a look at the outputs, we can see that we still have the SPI outputs. Instead of hooking it up over here with a special Arduino library called SDFAT, I just opted to take the simple route and hook it up externally. Version 3 st still has the radio module, just didn't have it connected. So this is version 3 of the Ultimate Flight Computer. I thought I would show the raw PCB. This is it. I ordered it from JLC PCB and it's just 2 ounce cop 1.6 ounce copper I believe actually and it has a custom logo that I designed in um, a separate thing and was able to import it onto here. Now a neat part about this flight computer is the accelerometer and barometer are actually nested inside of each other. This created some issues on how to solder it, but they were all fixable. Now another error with the board is that on the on the custom reference I made for the accelerometer, SCL and SDA are backwards. But the way I solved this, as we can see, is just to take two wires and loop them underneath each other. Well, I don't know how I don't know what, how you would say that, but I looped them around, and that solved the problem. Now, taking a look at the pinout, V3 actually has one more than V one more pin than V2. It has 32 pins instead of 31. Taking a look at this side, we have SPI. We have one analog channel to read from, AREF of the Arduino. RX and TX serial communication, ground, pyro 2, pyro 1, 
and Pyro 3. We also have Reset and A7 to read analog inputs from. Moving over to the other side, we have SCL communicate SCL and SDA, the pyro disconnect that I talked about before. VIN of the uh, input from their battery, grounds, the switch terminals, ground 3.3 volts, 5 volts, ground, and 5 volts from the Arduino. Which in this case, this Arduino, the 33BLE, does not have a 5 volt pin. But in other cases, when you're using a different Arduino, it may have a 5 volt pin. At the moment, V3 has some basic code for it. All it is is some simple data logging code. It logs to three separate files. In the future, it might log up to five. Even though I'm using a very powerful Arduino, it still significantly slows the code. Ultimate V3's first flight is scheduled for September 30th at the moment. In the future, there will actually be a, a Ultimate V3. It will probably come out at the end of this year or next year because I may end up actually selling this flight computer. I'm not sure at the moment, but we'll see where that goes. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.